Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to look at recreating the camera functionality from the original Resident Evil. It's going to be a little bit modified because the original Resident Evil kind of had this hybrid 2D, 3D environment. So the rooms for the most part were a 2D image and you had 3D objects on top of it. However, the basic idea of the camera being in fixed locations and then just rotating to stay focused on your character. And then when your character is out of line of sight, that the uh, point of view would then jump to another camera that is also in a fixed location. So that's the core functionality that we're going to use is that the camera is in a fixed location and that it will focus on your character until out of line of sight and then jump to another camera. So each camera will not be moving, it'll only be rotating. Okay, so what we've got here, I'll just quickly run this so you can see that anything, there really isn't anything happening as far as cameras. We have a static camera, we have a character walking down a corridor, they're going to turn right and they'll be out of line of sight. So what you want is you want the camera point of view to jump to another camera and then so on and so forth as the character keeps moving. So to do this, we're going to use Cinemachine. I'm not going to go through the whole process of installing, but it's just window, package manager, Unity registry, download and install Cinemachine. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this tutorial is I've noticed that though there are other tutorials, a lot of them are already out of date. So I'm going to call out what's changed since then. So first of all, as you notice, there is no Cinemachine top level menu anymore. It is now in the game object menu. So that's the first thing. Okay, let's go ahead and create our virtual camera. But since we don't want the uh, character to ever be out of line of sight, we're going to go to Cinemachine and then we, clear, we choose Clear Shot Camera. And when you create Clear Shot Camera, it does a couple things. In addition to creating this object, it creates uh, a virtual camera. And then up here on the main camera, you can see it added the Cinemachine brain. So you don't have to manually add that anymore. So that's another change. You used to manually add those. If you have multiple main cameras, you might have to still do that. I don't know. I only have one camera. So do be mindful of that if you have uh, multiple main cameras. And I just dragged and dropped this up to the top. I didn't turn it into like a child or a parent or anything. I just moved it to the top of the list. That doesn't functionally do anything. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to position this virtual camera. So where is it? It's like way up there. So let's see, let's move that down. Let's move that forward. Let's see how that looks. So since you have this Cinemachine brain component, when you click on the main camera, it will now show you the virtual camera. So you can see that's not lined up very good. So we can change this some more. Just mainly get rid of some of the rotation here. And let's rotate it up a bit. Now, right now, the virtual camera is still just static. We haven't given it a target target yet. So I'm doing some manual targeting, but we're going to actually give it a target in just a few seconds. Okay, so let's click on our main camera. That's much better. All right, so now what do we do? Well, we want the camera to target or to look at specifically this character. So there's two separate functions you need to be aware of the ability to follow and the ability to look at. We only want the ability to look at. We don't want it to follow. So look at means the camera will stay focused on, it'll rotate, but it won't move. So look at allows for rotation, but not movement. Whereas follow will allow for movement. So if I click on the virtual cam, here's those two things that I just described. So here's follow, here's look at. You just drag and drop the object that you want it to look at. You drag and drop the object that you want to follow. So if it's meant to be like an over the shoulder cam, then the player would be in both of those. But we don't. We only want it to look at it. We don't want it to follow because we said we want static, uh, we want fixed camera positions. So we simply take Sporty Girl and drag and drop onto Look At. So now we're going to run this again. You're going to see what a difference that makes. You can see it's already tilting. And then watch when she takes the corner. So it's already rotating to follow her. Now she's getting out of line of sight, which is the second thing that we want to take care of. So again, usually if you're in like a, a, a third person game and you want the camera to follow them, 
you literally just put the character into follow. But here again, we want fixed positions. So that means we just have to add another camera. So what we can do is we can just copy and we paste. You can see that this camera is indeed still a child to that. And now we can just move it. Now you can go about this a couple ways. You probably could put the camera here that way when the camera uh, when it changes which camera is focusing on the character, you still have a similar view that you're behind the ca character. Or if you want, you can put it over here so it will be in front of the character. I'm just going to lower this one a little bit. Should be pretty good. doesn't have to be exact since it's just for demonstrative purposes. Okay, so now I do want to point a few things out because this is something else that you'll see in other demos. So if you notice, see, we didn't create this. This automatically created Cinemachine Collider. So I believe in older versions of Cinemachine, you had to expressly create a collider, else it would not jump to the next camera. Now that seems to be done automatically. I did not add that collider. It added itself. I believe it gets added when we created the second camera. So again, I've seen tutorials that say to manually add it. That looks like that has now been automated. So let's go ahead and run this now. And there you go. That It's that easy. Cinema Machine is very, very easy to work with. And it'll follow her. And now it won't jump here because I haven't added a third camera, but I'll do that next. And it's really just rinse and repeat. So let's grab that second one. We'll add a third. And we'll just move it here. So we'll keep that theme of having the camera. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong object. Yeah. Should be about right. We'll keep the same height. And now if we check. Now the second one now has Cinema Machine Collider. Okay, so I think that's just about it. Let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. Like I think, like, like like I said, you could do like cinematic things. Like um, you could have the camera really low to give the sense that something is like crouching on the ground. Or maybe you could have one camera be directly above the notion that maybe something is above it. And um, so this is just the basic functionality. How you actually position the cameras, that's really an art in of itself. So I think that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give a like to the video. Uh, if you wish to, please subscribe to the channel. And if there's anything you want to see, please leave a comment. And please do enjoy the rest of your day.